So, welcome to your second course class, whatever you want to call it, for Wand Basics. We're going to be discussing the design process, how we get to designing a wand before we actually go and make it, the do's and don'ts, the some of the, the tips and tricks that I've learned when designing something, and hopefully this helps you in your wand making process, or you guys at least just enjoy the video, even if you don't make wands. It's cool. I don't mind. Let's have some fun. I'm Professor Ender, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna be talking some wands today. First things first. Um, I recommend for anyone that's creating anything to keep a um, a notebook, a sketchbook, a idea book, some something like that. I have a few. I have my other one where I mostly just design wands. This is kind of the idea book where I write scripts, stuff like that scripts, right? We want to call them scripts. Um, it's more of just kind of an idea, a planner. Um, but for the most part, I would say always keep track of them. If you come up with an idea or if you see something, jot it down uh, or take a picture of it. That's something that I always do too. Let's say I look at something like um, a mouse and I'm like, oh man, that mouse has some, some cool patterns on it. And that would be really cool to try to incorporate into something. I would then take that pattern, try to either take a picture of it, um, or I would then uh, jot it down, draw it, try to draw it as best you can. Here is uh, my very first wand notebook. Still haven't finished filling it up yet, but um, I'm about, I'd say about a third of the way to almost half of the way through it. As you can tell by the uh, the dirtier pages, those are the ones <laughs> that I've, uh, I've already drawn on. Um, so, Here's a big tip that I recommend. Um, keep your drawings small. Keep them, um, this is basically the size that I draw, that I draw them in. Um, so you can see that I can fit a bunch on one page and if I have the same idea, I can keep editing it and, and changing it a little bit as I work my way down. I try to keep it pretty simple to not add too much detail in there because here's what happens. You start adding too much detail, you start, like overthinking things. I always like to go by the motto of uh, KISS. If you guys don't know what that is, it's keep it simple stupid or keep it super simple. I like keep it simple stupid because it makes you feel a little dumb when you're, you're, you're thinking about it and it's a little funnier, right? That's the one that I like to use. But that being said, um, the simpler your design is, the easier it's gonna be for you to create it and um, the happier you're most likely gonna be because you're gonna be able to succeed in your creation that you made. I have some drawings in here that um, I, I get, you, get, you get a little bit ambitious, right? You get a little ambitious and you can't, you think like, ah, I can do this, I can definitely make this. When you start drawing, you definitely have to think of your limits. You have to think, whenever I'm drawing something, I'm pretty much thinking, how am I gonna make this? I, I can't just jot something down. When it comes to an idea, I, I can. When, I, when it comes to just an idea, I just draw that shape, that whatever look that I want. Um, I've taken pictures of spoons that had cool patterns on the on the handle of the spoon because I was like, hey, this looks pretty cool. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to make something out of it someday. So I draw it somewhere, I take a picture of it. Then when I go to draw something, I then have that reference to go off of. A lot of wand makers and a lot of your guys' submissions are just very complicated. They, they just, and I would say about pff, at least 30% of my drawings, when I go to transfer them to a real wand, they change in some way. Or sometimes they change completely. I, I make the wand that I drew and I'm just like, this doesn't look half as good as I thought it was gonna look. So let me continue to evolve it. So here we have some older designs. And as you can see, they don't really have a lot going on. They're mostly, um, one idea, and then you evolve that idea. So obviously we're not all artists, right? The best thing that you can do is just jot something down, get it on paper and um, just keep keep drawing. That's, that's one big thing. You don't need to draw a wand before you make it. It just helps you stay more closely true to, um, to your idea. And also it helps you kind of organize your ideas. So that's why I highly recommend um, a pencil and a notebook. I don't know why I said them backwards, but um, a pencil and a notebook. This I made a little duct tape holder for my uh, for my pencil. If I were to re if I were to rebuy this, I would definitely buy this one instead 
because it's uh, it's just a better notebook. Um, Lem Lemomi, Lemomi. I'll put a link to this guy and my pencil and the eraser. I also have a nice little eraser that I like to use. It's like a fine fine tip eraser, so it really helps get in there really small. Let's talk about the other thing when it comes to designing that most of you guys will make the mistake doing. One, I hate animal um, animal designs. Let's let's talk about some of the wands, the character wands from Harry Potter. Um, let's say Voldemort's wand or Harry's wand, both of them, both Vol Voldemort's and Harry's wand. Um, when you look at both of them, neither of them represent the person. So if you look at Voldemort's, it's like a bone, right? It looks like bone and a hook and stuff. It looks dark and evil and scary. But if you think about it, Voldemort's not made out of bone. He's not a skeleton. He's kind of a monster at this point, but it, it, it you know, you know what I'm saying? And then you look at Harry's wand, it doesn't represent him at all. It's mostly bark and then the inner part of the bark and then the blade. When you guys are designing something and you're designing, let's say you're designing your own wand for your personality, um, I would say don't think about it as, what are the things that I like? Let me incorporate this into my wand. You need to decide if you wanna be more organic or if you wanna be more uh, mechanical or or machined look, something of a straighter look. You can go by the simple um, Pottermore description of it or picture, I guess, of it, and then try to evolve that into your own. Problem with that is that Pottermore only has three different designs for the wands, and then it just changes the length and the wood. So, it, you know, when you say, hey, I have the same wand as you, oh my God. And then everybody else is like, yeah, so do us, we do as well too. Doesn't really help anybody. So therefore, let's say you have a, um, a design and you like the more organic style wands. When you go to design it, don't think about it as, okay, I really like this twist and I really like um, the, these, these hash marks that I'm gonna put on here and I like this, I want, I want to be a pumpkin at the end um, and then, so, don't do that. Don't think of everything that you, you've seen on every wand that you're gonna like because it's just gonna look like a mishmash mess. It's gonna look, it's not gonna look good, right? So, so definitely don't do that because it may look good in a drawing, but then when you go to have it in real life, it's just, it's so busy. There's so much going on. Choose one idea and expand upon that. Um, it is possible to have multiple things happening in the same wand at the same time but it's a risky it's a risky thing that you're going to do it's it's it may not work as well as a simple idea that evolves and just looks elegant and nice if you look at some of the other wands what you're going to find is that a lot of the ones that you may like are are very simple they have one big idea that evolves into the whole wand and I can't stress enough that that's what everyone should do when they're designing wands. I mean, if you don't want to, if you wanna make your stuff super busy, if you wanna have um, a lot of different things going on at the same time, go for it. It may not look as good though. Everyone has their own style when you're creating. It's not a, it's not a big deal, but um, pretty soon we're gonna be drawing up some wands. Um, I haven't thought of this yet, so we're gonna go from scratch and we're gonna just draw up some wands and, and hopefully they, they come out good ish. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. And if you are, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below letting us know what, what you want to see next, what you want the next topic on Wands Basics to be. Um, eventually we may move to Wands Advanced or 102 or something like that, or 202, whatever the next course would be. But right now we're still in the basics. We're still going over just general rules and stuff like that. Eventually we may um, even start getting our hands dirty a little bit and uh, making some making some wands or maybe making parts of wands, combining it, I don't know yet. Let me know down below what you guys wanna see next and uh, let's move on. Let's talk about some of the Fantastic Beast wands and the designs and then also um, the Elder Wand. I have the Elder Wand here too. Um, so let's start off with the Elder Wand, being the eldest wand. Aha, <laughs> got him. It doesn't have a lot going on. It's fairly straight. There aren't a lot of, there aren't a lot of bendy wands um, in the Harry Potter universe, um, but, this one is one of the more unique ones because it has a lot going on on the blade. Most of the wands have handle patterns or something like that, something happening in the handle as opposed to the entire wand like this one does. It's a simple design. It's a repeating design with slight changes going down. 
it's a unique wand. It's not something that you're gonna see every day, but it is a beautiful wand as well. But then you have something like Newt Scamander's wand, which has, for the most part, the busiest part of it is the handle. And then you have a somewhat simple blade, um, no real guard here at all. But then you do have um, this, it's supposed to be like a fossil um, design and it's supposed to be like, you know, kind of like stone almost. And it's a, it's a very simple design. The most, the most unique thing about this is that it has a hole in it, right? Um, so it seems like this wand was definitely built around this handle and then worked its way out. You don't have to have a very busy um, blade because as long as you have a very unique, interesting handle, something going on here, even though this is the part that's gonna be for the most part covered, um, unless you put it in your mouth like Newt did and then you could see the whole wand or you you know, you know did the ear thing. That's cool too, you know? I love this wand. This is, um, these three wands that I'm showing you are my three top three favorite wands. And um, the next one is, it's one of those that I was talking about where you can do different things, mix them and still have it be something interesting as long as it's done perfectly, which personally I think Dumbledore's new wand is done perfectly. Um, you look at the handle, there's different parts of the handle. I'm assuming that this is supposed to be like a leather wrap around it. Um, it may just be wood, I'm not sure. At least the real one, what it's supposed to be. Um, I haven't gotten my hands on the real one, so I don't know what it actually is. But to me, it looks like a leather wrap, and then you have the metal. Um, I'm not sure if the real one actually has wood going all the way through it, or if it's just supposed to be this pattern here. But you basically have three three things here going on. So you have this twist with all this craziness. You could have simply just had a wand that was pretty much this right here. And you would have had a beautiful wand. And then you add the handle. And you have all of these nice um, Nordic or Celtic um, um, runes on here. And it just makes it, just makes it look that much better. That being said, um, this wand is super busy. I think the fact that they kept it black made it kind of mellow out more and it made the handle match the blade, which is way nicer because if it was, if this was like a brown wrap here and then you have black and then you have the silver, it's just too busy. So think of colors as well when you're designing something. If you're gonna do a, a wrap, um, um, a, a a cord wrap or, or metal or anything like that, you have to make sure that the colors go together well. Black and silver always go together. Black and really anything. So if you're gonna make a black wand, Try not to mix too many colors. Try not to make your make a rainbow wand. Unless you want to make a rainbow wand, that's fine too. Nobody's gonna judge you, but it may just look very busy and maybe a little bit corny. I would also say stay away from animal designs, just because you like whales. Don't make your um, don't make your wand have a whale head on it or or a dolphin. I don't know why I keep going with um, with sea mammals, but you know if you like cats, don't make. Actually, that'd be kind of cute to make a little cat head on the end. But I would never do that because I like my wands to be more serious. So therefore, I, I feel like that would just look super corny. The main tips for this are gonna be keep it simple, keep it super simple, keep it simple stupid, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and then the other one is gonna be stay away from animal patterns. If you're gonna do a snake, maybe put a uh, snake skin something on it, design. Um, stay away from snake heads and um, scorpion stuff and just animals in general. Just stay away from animal heads. I feel like animal heads are way overdone in carving when it comes to carving walking sticks and stuff like that. Everybody does it. It's it's overdone. It's like an, it's like an old guy thing. Um, I feel like a lot of people think of that and the first thing they think of, oh, make a Ravenclaw, uh, make a Ravenclaw wand and put a, make a, make an eagle at the end. It's like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. That's that's not how that works. They would look bad anyway. And then we'll make a lion one and, and, and the snake one and so on and so forth. No, let's not do that. Please guys, don't make wands like that and don't submit wands like that because unless you think it's like the best wand ever, then I'll, I'll take a look at it. But other than that, eh. So moving on, let's draw up some wands and I'll show you guys some some of this stuff that I'm talking about. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention is I like either graph paper or um, dotted paper. So this is this is this has a bunch of dots on. It just helps you keep your your lines straighter. Um, I also usually use a little ruler. 
usually when I'm drawing something up, I will, um, I'll just kind of start with a shape. So, um, you know, you could fit a, a couple wands on here. We, we don't really have to go with, you know, just one big wand. You can turn it and just draw a few. Sometimes I'll turn it like this if I want to add some extra detail and um, I'll just draw like a big handle um, if that's the thing I want to, I want to focus on. I try to also just um, draw on one side so that this doesn't smudge up against the other side here. I'm not a big fan of uh, my drawings getting ruined. So let's start off with a uh, with a general a general shape. So um, if we're gonna just do something straight, right? I'll usually draw a somewhat straight line to just kind of see where where we're going with it, what we're gonna do. If I want to draw another one that's kind of like a little bent, I, I usually you know try to just draw a little bit of a bend there. So you can see that one just has a little arch. All right, and then we'll draw another um, another straight one here. I have no idea what these are gonna become whatsoever. So I'm mostly just going by, by kind of by feel and um, by random ideas that I may get. So now this is when your creativity um, is gonna really, you know, kind of be put to the test and you're gonna have to decide on what you wanna do. I usually just keep the, um, the end of the, the blades uh, straight, kind of make them, make them square a little bit and, uh, and take it from there. So if you want just a straight wand, there you go, boom, you got a straight wand, right? Um, you gotta kind of decide on what kind of design you, you really wanna go with. So for this one, we're gonna do a, um, let's see where our ratios are here. So this is gonna be the handle. I may wanna make this handle a little bit shorter. So this section right here is pretty much gonna be the handle. And then we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a little bit of a split here. This is gonna be just a simple, a simple design. Yes. Mm. And this is why I like this eraser, um, because it's nice and small, the tip, and you can really get in there. It erases pretty well. Um, always try to draw a little bit on the lighter side. So here's what I want to do. I want to make two little squares here and then one little square at the end as well. And then we're going to just uh, just realize that these aren't straight. Mm, we'll do that. Make it flare out a little bit and then straighten it out. And then this one will just connect. So as I'm drawing this, I'm deciding how am I going to make this? So right now, the way that I would make this would be on the lathe. I would pop this on the lathe. There's no curves at all to it. So um, I would definitely use it on the on the lathe and by curves i mean for the general part of it it's equal on both sides so this side is the same as this even though in the drawing <laughs> it looks a little off but in real life that's that's the that's the plan if you guys pay attention uh you will notice that my drawings aren't the best you know i kind of just try to get an idea on paper and then um and then we take it from there so then for the blade instead of making just a straight blade we're going to kind of give it these little these little just imperfections where it's not a perfect straight thing. So all we're doing is just tip, dipping this in a little bit just to kind of give it some some concave sections to it, which you guys have seen in some, some other versions of my wands. Um, so maybe this wand will be made at some point because like I said, it's not too busy. There is a little bit of a, of a pattern to the blade and there is a little bit of a pattern to the handle and, and it's not really much. Um, you can make these out of metal here if you have some sort of metal, which I just thought of because this section right here could be, um, could be made out of metal, which I think is what I may try to, try to do at some point. And uh, I think that'll look really good if I do that. Yes. The thing is I have no way of making this metal as of right now, so I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. So this is a this is a general idea for drawing wands, right? So so now let's uh, let's turn it over to to this one. Let's just kind of get a general shape here, and and get it going. Let's put a little like pop out part there. And with this one, it's kind of like a Bellatrix style one where it has almost that like cane style. But then I want to make it. Do I want to make it straight there? Hmm, I have a better idea. Let's do this. Since I gave it that weird shape, 
let's do, let's kind of do a, a even weirder handle here. There we go. So remember, when you're drawing, a, a big thing that people don't realize is that, um, is that you have a, you have three dimensions, but you're drawing in two dimensions. So you have to think about how it's gonna, if it's, if any of that wand is gonna come forward at all, um, if it's just gonna be flat um, on the sides, if there's gonna be any sort of shape to to this section at all over here, if it's gonna be, you know? So that that's one of the big the big things that people don't realize when they're drawing, especially when they're drawing, drawing, um, drawing spirals, right? When you're drawing a spiral that goes around something and it's like this, um, people don't realize that this is most likely going to be um, a few spirals. It's not gonna be just the one, it's gonna be, it's gonna be probably three, three spirals going all the way around because they are so tight. If you were to not make it so tight, uh, then you can, you could have just one going all the way around, but it wouldn't be able to do this and then go back here. It would have to basically do this. So instead of that, <laughs> it would be more like this. Going around the wand if you had one, one spiral, probably not even that tight. I'm probably drawing it badly too. So if you had one spiral going all the way around, it would be here, because if you think about it, like look at this, it would go wrap around and then come around here. <laughs> so even this is a little tight, even this right here. So this would basically be two spirals here. So we'd have one, uh, but then they would crisscross a little bit. So just think about that when you're drawing something like this, how it's going to, how it's gonna end up. So I really like how this one's turning out randomly, even though it's just a, uh, a very simple design. I think that one's gonna, I think that one will be pretty cool. It almost looks like a bone, like a, like a very crooked, disturbed bone. So this is exactly what I was talking about here. This is a very simple design and a very, um, I, in my opinion, very elegant, but it really only has one thing going on. And that is this section right here. The rest of it is pretty simple, but I think it looks really good. It still keeps a somewhat general straight design where the blade and the pommel are in a straight line. You just have a bit of a twist in the middle. Um, that's probably the easiest style of wand to draw is something that has that going on. It's a lot easier to, to plan for holding and everything like that. But um, let's draw a pommel heavy now. So let's start off with a big old, big old pommel here. Let's, let's, let's do something. Let's do a big old, big old one. I'm not, as you can tell, I'm not even using this line anymore. Let's do, let's do something here. I'm not even sure what we're gonna, what we're gonna do. And let's do a little bit of a guard as well. I don't want it to be a very uniform guard. I want it to be kind of the same style. And now let's add a wrap in there. Let's just do a simple, a simple wrap, an X style wrap around this section here. So what we'll do is we'll wrap this. And you got, again, you have to think about how it's going to, to actually be. So you can do, if you want an X, you're gonna have to just do one section here and then another section over it on this side. So that's really, that's really the general part of it there. That's what you're gonna have to do if you want that to, um, to work at all. So this is kind of what I do for, for a drawing is I, I sketch it out really quick and then I'll go back and, um, and refine it. So this is a super, super simple sketch. Um, but again, now you can go in do a little erasing now that you already have your uh, your idea on paper, um, and then you can go in and and add a little bit, add a little bit more of a of a detail and and not have it look all weird and stuff. So now for this one, do we want it? Do we want to keep this pommel s perfectly symmetrical, or do we want to do, do we want to do something like that? Maybe. Ooh, look at that. That may look kind of good. And then if we do something like this, do we want to bring the um, the tie back to here as well? Do we want to do something on the end, or maybe even just do something just like like a wrap this way on here? That may look good. So if you plan on putting a wrap in something, like let's say for this, right? I would probably cut out a little section like that so that I could wrap that around 
around there. So that's more of an advanced, um, an advanced uh, look at it. So um, adding a little bit of like shading to things sometimes helps as well. If you want to uh, to just try to imagine it, imagine it a little bit better, um, it just kind of helps uh, helps you see what you're trying to make um, a little bit better. It's pretty easy to keep it simple. Um, you, you guys, you just have to look at your design and just think. Can this be simplified a bit? Can I take some components away from it? Because I feel like that's the biggest mistake that most people make when when they're designing and that takes away from your ability to create. If you're going too busy, I mean, you could always draw a wand and once your skills get better and you feel more comfortable doing it, you go back and do it. I've done that before. I have an idea and I'm like, this would be awesome. I have no means of making this right now. I have no way of, of making this work. And then maybe a couple months later, I figure it out. I go back to it and I, and I figure it out. I recently made a wand that I will not be showing you guys today um, that was almost done. And then I, it's just something didn't work out. Um, so I decided to scrap it. So I, I didn't scrap it. I put it aside, but for now it's scrapped. For now, I have no means of making what I was trying to make. So I failed at making it but the, it, it was coming out great. And then uh, something didn't work. Hopefully you guys will stay tuned and I will have that for you someday. Hopefully uh, in a couple months maybe when I figure it out. Definitely don't ever feel discouraged. Always just keep trying to do new things. That's what I, I do with almost all of my wands. Whenever I, I have a new idea or I see somebody drew something, you guys submit a ton of wands. If you guys wanna submit wands for review, I do. I will be making a bit that video soon. Um, you can submit them to newwandsday at gmail.com. I check them out, I look at them. There's some rules, they'll be down in the description on how to submit or what to submit. So um, follow those rules, please. With these designs, I feel like these are some simple, quick designs that like really didn't take a lot of, um, a lot of work. I think they came out pretty good. And they're new designs that I haven't made yet. So it was definitely, I had no idea what we were gonna make today. It was just uh, it was just like a, hey, let's draw something. Let's figure this out. And um, I kind of tried to do three different styles, something that's super simple, super basic, has one thing going on. And then one that has, it's still a basic style, but it does have um, some nice, features to it and it has a couple of things going on. And then we had that last one that we drew that you could see as I was making it, I decided to add, bring more of that concept, the the wrap around the guard, bring it over to the handle as well to the pommel and then have it just kind of incorporate together better. So that wraps up the class. Um, I don't want you guys to be late for your next class. So I'm gonna let you guys go a little bit early, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys stay tuned for some more of these videos. Remember, if you guys have any ideas for future videos, I get a lot of my ideas from you guys. So make sure to submit them down below. And we do read all of the comments. So it, it's, it's just a good idea to do that. And also it helps us out if you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys come back for some more wand related stuff in the future and other Harry Potter related stuff. Also, we do book related things on here too. We read a lot of books. Hopefully you guys are reading as well and maybe joining the book club. I hope you guys enjoy this video. See you guys in the next video. Uh, bye, bye, bye.